everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're new you are so very very welcome my name's Jane my husband Mike is behind the camera with British early retirees debt and mortgage free and living on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest France and every Wednesday we open our homes invite you into the sofa for a midweek money chat let's take a look what we're going to talk about this week <music> something first of all because you know me if you've been here before you know I like to be reflective and it is more important now than it's ever been before for any of us to build up as best we can a stock of food and things we need in our homes as best we can is a very important thing to say here and we're heading into I, I just can't I don't want to say it's it's going to be this but it is it is we're heading into really, really difficult times. Let's just take our situation here in Europe for food. We have had the worst drought in, in history. Literally, they can't remember one worse than this. Rivers have dried up. And that has a massive impact on farming. Farmers buy water. They have water supply. They have to buy water. They don't all have a water supply. Farmers are feeding their animals winter feed now. That's going to put up the price of winter feed. So anything into the winter, meat is going to cost more. There are less vegetables. Last year, we had blight all across Europe. We had food that went mouldy. We had less and we paid a lot more for vegetables. This year, we're going to pay even more because of the drought. Vegetables are smaller, potatoes are smaller, there's less of them. They're already saying that some vegetables are going to be twice the price. So it is really important for any of us to have what we can in our house to help buffer us against this. We have, every single one of us in Europe, we're facing massive rises in energy prices. So that means more of people's money is going to go on paying their energy bills. So they're gonna have less for food. And it just means we are going to have to be really, really careful stewards of everything we've got, every penny we've got and every piece of food we've got. And I cannot tell you how many times I have seen on a Facebook group, on a money saving group, on a frugal group, on a mum's group, on a family group, those desperate messages that say, I've got four kids, I've got hardly any money, I've only got seven quid left, feed us for the end of the week, what have I got? I'm talking to everybody here. It is everybody's responsibility to be prepared for those difficult times because they are coming. They are coming. I'm not a scaremonger. I'm not one of those people who's worried about the big events. I know the big events are beyond me. The little events, then they're not little, are they? They're massive. They're massive to us. Those financial events that are coming, I can do something about, and that's what I'm talking about today. Now, lots of us have seen lots of channels and they're fascinating and they're wonderful and they have these massive pantries of food. And it, that's great. You, you might have 11 children. You might live where you're snowed in for six months and so on and so forth. I want to talk today about the everyday practicalities of building a reasonably sized pantry, a reasonable sized pantry with what you can afford and using it. Without further ado, as I often say in these videos, let's get started. The first thing, and I think it is so important to do when you have a stockpile of food, when you have your pantry, when you have your stock of food, is to know what you have. And every now and then you are going to have to do a proper stock check. And when you do that proper stock check, you'll know everything you've got in the fridge, the freezer, the pantry, the cupboard, under the stairs, in the basement, everywhere, and get it written down. We keep a notebook and in there, I know my tins, my dried, my frozen, my fresh, but I know what I've got and can easily see that. And it forms a kind of a list of what I have. An important thing to do is when you do that stock check is please, if there's anything you just think, oh goodness, I bought that and we're never going to eat it, please don't keep it. These are such difficult times. If you've got it and it is in date, 
please give it to a food bank or a food pantry, your friends or your family or your church group. But please pass it on, don't keep it if you're not going to use it. But there's number one, a really thorough stock check and inventory so you know exactly what you have. you've got and you know what you've got a lot of and if it's a lot of and you do use it a really important thing is to create some kind of plan some kind of menu idea some kind of recipe ideas and I for example in my stock book I've got pages at the back and I'll keep pages of ideas of what I'm going to do with it Here's an example. I got a very good deal on tinned salmon. We particularly like tinned salmon. Fresh salmon is very expensive and we only have it once a month, but we do love tinned salmon. So I have 10 tins of salmon in the cupboard. Now I've got lots of ideas of what to do with that. We like it in sandwiches, we like it in baked potatoes, we like it with pasta. I like to put it in quiche and egg prosper's quiche and things and so on. So, there's an example. So if you've got something in your cupboard and you have a lot of it, if you have a mass of pasta, what are you going to do with all that pasta? Get some ideas written down because that will inform any other food you buy, any other food that you stock and put away and any shopping that you do. So we have to keep that food stock now and we have to be very careful and very mindful with it. How many of us have ever in the past opened our shopping bags, taken our frozen food out, opened the freezer and just put it in? How many of us have just got out the cheese, the milk, the yogurt and the vegetables and just put them in the fridge or the tin goods or the pasta and just put it in the cupboard? Food is precious, it's very expensive We've got to make it last. We've got to make it feed as many people as we possibly can on as little money as we have. So we've got to stretch it. We've got to be really careful with it. Those days of just being slack Alice with our food like that are over. We can't do that. So this is what we do. We get our shopping home. We can sit there for a minute. We put our stuff when we go shopping in a cooler bag. It's all zipped up, it can stay cool. So if there's anything frozen, it's in a cooler box. It can sit there for a minute or two. And I make sure that my fridge is cleaned out. So I literally take everything off the shelf. I'll use hot soapy water. I'll wipe it all out. I'll dry it all out. And I put the new goods that I bought for the week at the back and anything that I might have still left at the front. It's exactly the same with the freezer. I'm usually rotating it. I have a three drawer small freezer. And what I'm doing is I make sure I've got one drawer empty at any one stage. So that drawer becomes the stuff, the new stuff comes in and I'm leaving that and I'm using the stuff in the top drawer first, but I'm rotating it around. The same in my store cupboard. I'm making sure I'm keeping it tidy and organized, especially with things if you're buying things like cookies for your children or you're buying anything that that needs using up. You've really got to keep that tidy and organised. And when you do that, you keep it clean, you're checking the quality of everything, you're seeing what needs using up first, you're making sure that nothing goes to waste. Because like I said, this food is precious, it's really expensive and getting more expensive. And we're facing winters with less money, with less money for food and shortages. It's the whole lot together. So we really, really do need to be clean, tidy and organised with our stock. Now, if you're like me, you'll love watching videos about food hauls and food storage and all of those things. And every time you must have seen these two, you see these pretty pantries. They're all organised and they're all labelled and their freezers are all organised and everything's just marvellous. But please don't forget when people are showing that to you, they're showing they've had a really good clean up, a really good tidy up and they're doing it for the camera. But the important part to remember about those pretty pantries, about those freezers, is it is for eating. It is for you to feed your family with. So we can't just keep buying more and buying more and buying more. 
And I have a friend, and if you're watching, you know who I'm talking about. I love her to bits. But she said to me one day, she said, oh, I keep going shopping, then I get home and I've got nowhere to put it because the freezer's full. But what do you do? Buy another freezer and another freezer and another freezer? Or do you actually say to yourself, right, I'm going to stop check, like I said at the beginning, and I'm going to meal plan, and I'm going to stop rotate, and I'm going to use up what I've got. It's okay having a pretty pantry, but it's not for looking at. So yes, I might have 10 tins of salmon in my cupboard, but by the end of the month, there might only be five, and I then might stock it up again. I might have three kilos of sausages broken down into bags in the freezer but I'm not going to leave them there ad infinitum they are going to get eaten so please remember this a pantry a stockpile any of those things it's not for looking at it is for eating so don't just look at it get using it We try every week, every month to put away 10% of our supermarket bill. So we have 75 euros a week for our supermarket. That's all food, all drink, all toiletries, all cleaning products. And we try to put aside 10% of that. So seven and a half euros or thereabouts each time we go shopping. Uh, what we're doing at the moment is we spend our entire food budget every week, every month, and we're buying a little bit more and that's when we have to be smart about what we're buying and what we're putting away. So there's the obvious ones, aren't there? All the starches that we put with our meals. So we're not just thinking of rice and pasta, we're also because we like potatoes. We buy tinned potatoes, dauphinois potatoes, potatoes that's dehydrated. Uh, we're not great lovers of instant mashed potatoes. We don't dislike it we're still putting it away. We know there's going to be a potato shortage and the prices will be high. So we're buying more of those at the moment. But we also would advise people as well, especially if you live in the UK, to think of meals in a tin. Something that my kids used to really like were those great big tins of ravioli. I know it's not proper ravioli, but kids love it. And they would have that, a tin of green beans with it. They might have some bread with that. And then afterwards, they might have a tin of fruit and a tin of custard. That's what I mean about shopping for entire meals. If you can find cooked beef in a tin or chicken and white wine sauce or chili in a tin or bolognese in a tin or different types of curries or stews in a tin, those are great things to put away. But I would give you this piece of advice by one. Buy one, try it, and if you like it, then stock up. I think in the past I have bought a brand of chilli in a tin. I've got it home. I didn't quite like it, and I've ended up having to eat it because we've bought a lot of it. But it's a really good thing to have entire meals that are shelf-stable, that maybe are in tinned or that maybe are dry, just like I said earlier that I've read on social media, those families who are in desperate circumstances, they've run out of money and you just know, I've got food in the cupboard, I've got whole meals in there, and they're there, that they are there. That you can say to yourself, well, I've got rice, I've got pasta, I've got sauce, I've got something, I've got tinned fruit, I've got some tinned custard or some instant custard. It will just really, really help. So be really smart about that shopping as well. Think to yourself when you're buying it, am I going to eat it? So if your hand is hovering on something, think, well, that's a good deal. That's a good thing to put away. But you don't know what to do with it, or whether people would eat it. Take your hand away from it. So when you're shopping, be really smart about this and you're putting away and think, I'm saving meals. next thing about some long-term storage that I think is really important, especially if things are going to be tight and especially if you've got children or you've got a long winter ahead of you and not much money, is please plan for some cheerfulness. Kids will get through this with a jam tart or some jam on toast. So having that sweet alternatives there, having instant custard, tinned fruit, 
Having instant hot drinks. In the UK, we have things like Horlicks, Ovaltine, hot chocolate. Here in France, you get those big things of hot chocolate. Having as well things like dried milk, so you can make those nice hot milky drinks. I mean, I, I can remember those days of having like instant milk, which you added to water and coffee. Just gets you through those tough times, isn't it? Having sugar, having jam. Also in the UK, you can buy puddings in tins. You can buy long life yogurts, long life puddings. Here in France, you can buy long life puddings as well. They've got a foil pull off the top of it. They'll last six months to a year. Here we can get lovely puddings and custards and things in tins. Because, you know, when, when things are tight and you want a bit of a cheer up, you do want to have the ingredients in the cupboard to make a cake. And with the rising butter prices and things like that at the moment, find different ways of making homemade cake. And I know everyone will say, well, I don't like to do that, but try it. You can use different vegetable oils in making cakes instead of butter, and you can stock up on oil and put that away. So when you are stockpiling, when you are thinking of building up the stock, don't just all the time think of meals, 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 meals. Think about, what about a few treats? What about some chocolate to put away? What about some nuts or some dried fruit to put away? It's not always just about survival. Sometimes it's about putting a smile on your face. <laughs>once you get used to building a stock of food and once you get used to doing a stock check it's really really helpful to avoid any food waste start doing that weekly and then when you do that weekly and you make your meal plans as the expression goes you shop your stock first so you're making your meal plans from what you have first using up first of all salad if salad's in your fridge you eat that first got fresh vegetables in your fridge that last longer than salad you eat those next so you're eating what's in your fridge first you're eating what's in your freezer and then your go-to is to add to that to bulk it out to pad it out and make it go further you're doing that from your pantry as well so make sure you're doing those weekly stock checks I do like to emphasize that I don't like to waste any food. It's really important to me when I do those weekly stock checks and I'm rotating my food when I bring it back, in, back from the shops. But if I've got a lot of something in my freezer, for example, a lot of sausages in my freezer, a lot of chicken in my freezer, or a lot of minced beef, ground steak, I think some of you call that in my freezer, is to once in a while to take that from my freezer and do a really good batch cook. When I was working, I used to love a big old batch cook at the weekend and I could literally put meals away for the rest of the month. And then I could label them and organize those meals so I can just pull them out the freezer and use them. Because that is what a stockpile is for. It is for eating. We need to have it there and we need to eat it. So something really important to do and sharing it with you, something that I do and it is a suggestion, it's not an instruction, is that you do a good batch cook every now and then and so you've got those meals in the freezer and then you take those meals from your freezer and you stick them on the meal plan and you eat them. I've been saving this point and I think it's so important but it's never an easy message so here goes. Somebody has got to conduct this orchestra. Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody's got to organise this food. It doesn't organise itself. Somebody has got to be the person giving the kids, the family, the news of what's to eat and when we're eating it. Because we haven't got that kind of endless supply of food. We cannot, under these financial circumstances, allow teenagers to just graze in the fridge. We cannot allow people just to eat from supply. This is food that has got to last, last the winter, last these difficult economic times, it's got to last. And somebody has got to make 
that happen. So, you might want to put a list up on the fridge of things you want eaten first. If you're going to eat a sandwich, you might say to people, eat the ham and tomatoes first. It's, they're open, please eat those first. You might say to people, do not eat the cheddar cheese. That cheddar cheese, I'm going to be making cheese sauce, I'm going to be making stuff for, for recipes. Don't eat that. Please eat the blue cheese first. You're going to be having to say to people, look, if you want some fruit, eat the bananas first. They go off before the apples. You're going to have to say to people, do not touch that jam, that peanut butter, that in the fridge. That's next month's food. Don't touch it. There's jam in the fridge. There's peanut butter open. Please eat that first. You're going to have to be the person who stock rotates. You're going to have to be saying to people, do not open the barbecue sauce. There's ketchup already open. Use that first. So you might feel something like a drill sergeant and I can hear my mother's words in my head now. Of she, I think she had a sixth sense of, she could, he, she could be in the garden and she could hear us walking towards the kitchen. I can hear her words now. You know, step away from the biscuit tin. Don't touch that cake. Don't even think of eating that. Because she knew there was so much food and it had to last. So whatever you have to be, whether you have to be the conductor of the orchestra, whether you have to be the boss of the kitchen, whether you have to be the drill sergeant, I mean, whatever, somebody's got to be in charge of this and make difficult financial decisions about this food. Because it's that's the, that's the whole point of the stockpile, is it's got to last, it's got to see us through. And it's, and you know, you might have to have that conversation as an entire family, as a couple, you put your meal plans together first, and you might even need, especially if you've got kids, you might have to have a, not just a meal plan, but a snack plan. You might have to think to yourself, well, how many biscuits can they have a day? Can I let them have a packet of crisps? We call them chips on a Saturday, but they can't have some every day because they won't last. How many, you know, this cake, a good thing to do, my mother used to do so I love this, you cut it up into the size of portions that you want so people aren't taking a great big chunk of it. You know, if need be, if, if need be, you're going to need to portion things out. You might even need to put things where they don't see them or can't get to them. But like I said, somebody has got to conduct this orchestra. We hope that you enjoyed that, you found it useful, or just liked a little bit of a chat on a Wednesday. We want to take this opportunity to thank everybody. Thank everybody so much for supporting the channel and for supporting each other and those kind, friendly and supportive comments that you leave. I read every single one of them. I know viewers read them too and find them interesting and informative. Thank you to all the subscribers and your support. Thank you so much to everybody who lets at least one advert or all of the adverts roll because that's how we we youtubers make a living and in these hard times we genuinely appreciate that thank you so much everybody we'll see you again soon bye for now